Patients arrive in haematology um, either via the pneumatic shoot system or through specimen reception. So specimen reception will process anything that are routine and they'll label them up and bring them over to us. Um, anything urgent will come in pneumatic shoot and we'll keep the forms here at the urgent bench so that we have them if we need to phone anything out to the wards. Each sample will get its own unique barcode that will be distinctive to that patient. Before we set the samples on the track we mix them roughly um, 8 to 10 times and then we place them on the start yard. Um, once they arrive on the start yard, anything that has been labelled up and put onto the computer system um, will transmit to our analysers so they will know what samples need what test. The samples will come along the start track and then they'll move on to the first analyzer. In haematology we have two identical analyzers um, and they process all our full blood count tests. So they will measure your haemoglobin, white cells and platelet counts. So whenever the sample has been processed for its full blood count, which is our main haematology test, it will move to the next um, part of the track, which is our slide stainer. What it does is it'll aspirate some of the patient's sample, um, it'll spread it onto a slide, it'll dry it um, and print any information regarding that patient on it so that we can locate it easily afterwards. Um, with these slides then, um, our trained biomedical scientists will look under the microscope for um, various reasons. It could be uh, maybe a new form of leukaemia, um, diagnosing an anemia, it could be a multitude of things. The samples are sent down the track to our interliner ASR analyzer, but our analyzer has a calculation on board that allows it to um, process within half an hour so we can get the results back quicker to the patient. Um, so it's just something to note that if a sample is going to be requested for an FPC and an ASR, it'll take an additional 30 minutes on top of your full blood count request. Whenever the sample has had its full blood count, its ESR and its slide, um, our analyzer has a storage capability, so it'll archive all our samples for us um, in these two main racks. Um, it'll put them in a specific position, so if we need to go back to that particular sample for whatever reason, we know how to easily look at it. We also have the ability to carry out some specialised testing here, so we would do specialist cytochemistry tests, um, malarial screens, sickle cell, and actually we're the regional centre for plasma viscosities. This is the coagulation section. Um, here we look at coagulation and clotting. Um, over here the samples are slightly different to haematology. In haematology we've seen the purple top EDTA tubes and here we have blue top sodium citrate samples and the difference really is the anticoagulant that they contain. So in coagulation uh, we're quite strict about our, our minimum fill. So here they must be filled to the minimum fill line. Here before we process the samples uh, we will spin them down a centrifuge to separate the plasma from the red cells. And the reason we do that is because that is the um, section of the, the component of the blood that we're interested in. The plasma contains the coagulation factors uh, and that's what's necessary for clotting, so that's what we're measuring here. Uh, I've said about the minimum fill and the reason we're quite strict about that over in coagulation is because uh, the sodium citrate that's present in these tubes is a liquid anticoagulant, whereas the EDTA in this tube is spread on and it's more like a powder. Um, so before you fill this tube, there's already a bit of a dilution, dilutional effect by having a liquid in there before you start. So that, that's the reason that we would be quite strict about so that. So the way these analyzers work is um, they will process the sample on a rack, a barcoded rack similar to haematology. Um, it'll aspirate out some of the plasma and the reagents on board will combine into a small cuvette such as this. It'll shine a light through and the length of time it takes for the light to no longer be able to shine through is the length of time it takes to clot and it uh, utilizes a method known as optical density in order to measure this. In coagulation, any samples that are grossly hemolyzed or lipemic uh, will flag up by the analyzer and let us know. Um, then a trained biomedical scientist would come along and examine those samples um, and investigate if they were, um, the results were accurate or not. Any results then will be uh, sent back to our main computer screens and we'll vet them out and send them to the clinical area. This is the blood bank department. Uh, samples arrive here either by the pneumatic shoot system or they're delivered over by specimen reception, but they'll never be labelled uh, by specimen reception. We keep the forms and samples ourselves here. Um, so the sample is labelled up and a corresponding label put onto the form. The analytical stage here is to spin the sample down in a centrifuge to separate the plasma from the red cells. Um, and once they've been spun down, then they go onto the racks and are sent onto our um, analysers. As with the other sections, uh, we have two identical analysers, again to maintain workflow. Um, one we will specifically keep for um, antibody identification and cross matches, and the other for group and screens, which are our main test requests. In the Southeastern Trust, we have a policy in place that means that we will not transfuse patients unless we have a confirmed sample in place. So um, it's beneficial to get a confirmed sample to us as quickly as possible um, in order for us to release the blood to the patient and the clinical area. When people come in here, they're usually quite um, amazed that this is the only stock of blood that we have for the entire hospital, but this is it. 
and um, we can get more blood from the um, Northern Ireland Blood Transfusion Service but really on a daily basis this is all we have to work with um, so we keep uh, various amounts of each different blood type uh, depending on how common they are in the population and how frequently we think we might need them um, we keep only 12 units of emergency well, of O negative blood and um, of that we keep four for emergency purposes so if we were to get um, perhaps maybe a car crash or something urgent um, or a massive blood transfusion protocol was initiated um, we have blood that we can issue. Whilst we hold um, packed red cells we also have a, um, various other blood products um, we hold albumin here, um, anti-D for maternity patients, um, human immunoglobulin and prothrombin complex concentrate as well as frozen products such as fresh frozen plasma and um, carboprecipitate. When blood is requested for a patient for a cross match, they can either be requested on that regional form or via telephone um, if they phone the blood bank. Whenever blood has been cross matched, um, we will issue it to that specific patient and notify the clinical area that it is ready for collection. Then the clinical area will send a porter or um, a member of the community, if it's in the case of a Marie Curie hospice patient or a district nurse, to collect the blood. And this is the room that they do it in. So we have an issue fridge, um, an issue platelet agitator, and then our ledger. Uh, we put the unit of blood into the fridge or the uh, platelet into the agitator. The blood transfusion policy of the South Eastern Trust complies with the current BCSH guidelines in that a patient's blood group is confirmed with a second sample prior to transfusion. The blood bank will contact the clinical area should a confirmation sample be required.